Hokkaido is a very powerfully spiritual, uh, slightly wild, uh, magnetic place. Hey, umbrella time. Thank you. Great. It's a place, particularly in the winter, where the clutter and, and distraction of life seems to fade away. Uh, when the snow comes and, and, and uh, everything is, is, is nicely covered in, in white or, or gray, uh, sounds go away. You can just hear the snowfall and your own heartbeat and breathing and very little else. Uh, it's a very quiet, meditational, calm place for me. Even in the midst of a storm, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful place to come and, and come to ground in a sense after being in the usual hurly-burly life that we all lead. It's like one vast white canvas uh, with calligraphy, black brush strokes uh, marked on this very, very beautiful abstract area. It's a very, very expansive uh, place. Um, and it's a place that uh, I find that I can breathe, and I can think, and I can float in my imagination. One of the uh, essential elements of Hokkaido, and, and in fact Japan in general, is that it is an island, a very intimate island or islands that have been changed and lived on and with over the centuries. There is nowhere seemingly that I've found in Hokkaido that is so wild that it doesn't have that element of people having been there. And I believe an essential ingredient of, of my work is, is the feeling of, of memories and stories and atmospheres that are that reside in the landscape. So I, again, look for particular environments um, that have been changed somehow, uh, that have the influence or impact uh, on the earth. In a sense, I impose the way that I see, the way that I feel, the way that I connect. Um, on the landscape here. So I look for certain things. And another photographer, of course, would produce an entirely different body of work, I would hope. Uh, this place can be extremely wild, particularly up in the mountains. And my vision, I think, is more of a, more of a domesticated landscape, in a sense. It's more of an intimate landscape. It's a, I look for single trees that have certain characters. I look for fence posts that have certain graphic elements to them that um, sometimes it's the, the snow barriers look like musical notes for me and scales. And I always have this vague theory that there's a certain language in the landscape that, that I certainly don't understand. I don't suppose anybody else does. But I love to wander around playing with these uh, marks on the landscape. It's rather nice when it becomes very abstract. More and more simple as, as I worked through it. I started with you know, hundreds of them and it got down to about three at the end. <laughs> Tea. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Rocky Macho. There are so many ways you can photograph the same subject matter. And I often spend an hour or two just in, with one tree. Um, not because I'm taking the same photograph over and over, <laughs> but because I'm experimenting with different angles, with different compositions, with different lenses, and with different speeds. Um, so particularly in snow storms, uh, one can photograph with very fast speeds and have that kind of uh, staccato effect, or you can actually see or see the snow as little dots all over the photograph, which is very, very nice. Uh, or one can go the other way and, and, and make very long exposures and the snow becomes like a, a veil, like a, a mist. Uh, and I tend in general to go that direction, to make the exposures longer rather than shorter. Um, I often do this with water, of course, too, with uh, almost anything that moves. So it, it creates something which the eye doesn't actually see, which, which I rather like. Um, I like the feeling that photography can be somewhat unpredictable, that we don't really have full control of what's going on, and that even during the exposure, things happen that we don't really know about. And um, it becomes a, a sense of discovery, like opening a Christmas present when you actually get the processed film back. <laughs>